Welcome to this next video in which we are discussing composition series and the Jordan Holder theorem. Okay, so enough setup now. What we want to prove is that these two composition series for this group capital G actually do obey part two of the Jordan Holder theorem, i.e., that their lengths are the same and that their composition factors correspond. Okay, now, let me firstly just spell out our strategy for doing this. What we're going to do is we're going to create two more composition series for the group capital G, one of which will be related to the composition series number one, and the other which will be related to the composition series number two. Now, it will then be very easy to say that composition series number one, and this one that we've built that's related to composition series number one, that part two of the jordan holder theorem will hold between those two, i.e. they'll have the same length and that their um, composition factors will correspond. Likewise, we'll be able to say the same for composition series number two and the one that we built that is based on it. Okay, we'll be able to say that they have the same length and that their composition factors will correspond. We will then prove that the two new composition series that we have built will have the same length and we'll have corresponding composition factors, and hence we will have proven that these two must have the same length and must have the same composition factors through this indirect pathway, basically. Okay, so let's get straight on to it. Let me actually show you these two related composition series that we're going to build. So we're going to build uh, composition series number three, which will be the one that's related to number one, and composition series number four, which will be the one related to composition series number two. Okay, so I'll do them down here, and we are going to use this composition series for F, which, remember, is the intersection of GK minus one with HL minus one. Okay, so these are the composition series we're going to build then. So we'll start with the trivial subgroup. Okay, and we'll use the same notation that we've got here, F0. Then we'll have F1. Okay, and it will be normal within dot, 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 all the way up to Fm, which is, of course, equal to this intersection. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this within GK minus 1. And, of course, I need to prove that that's okay to do, that i.e., that if I quotient gk minus 1 out by fk, I get a, a simple group. I will have to do that in a moment. And then I'll have gk here, which is of course equal to my entire group. Okay, so here is composition series number 3, and this is similar to composition series number 1, because look, uh, the two final groups here are the same. Okay, so if I go back up to comp show you composition series uh, number one, right up here, GK minus one and GK are our two final uh, subgroups in that composition series, okay? Uh, so this is very much so analogous to that one. Okay, so I'll just underline this in red here. So here is another composition series for G, and I will in a moment just prove that this is another composition series for G by proving that uh, GK minus one quotient out by FM is a simple group. Okay, all the others, it's absolutely fine, uh, because this was a composition series for F here. Okay, so we know that, indeed, all of these subgroups will be proper normal subgroups of the one after them. Okay, and that all of the composition factors will be simple groups. We also know that this um, is fine, because this was a, a jump that's in the composition series number one, and we know that GK quotient out by GK minus one will be a simple group. The only little problem that might occur is that this might not be a, a correct composition factor, but we will prove that it will be in just a moment. Okay, so now let me create composition series number four then. Okay, so composition num series number four, again, it's going to have this composition series for F inside it. So we'll have F0, F1, and then we'll go up all the way to Fm here, okay, and then we'll have, this time it will be based on number two, so we'll have Hl minus one, and of course we know that Fm is indeed a proper normal subgroup of Hl minus one, okay, and then this will of course be normal inside, whoops, I want Hl here rather than Gk, okay, which is another name for the improper subgroup G. Okay, so this is now composition series number four, and evidently this one is based on composition series number two, whilst composition series number three is based on composition series number one. Okay, so the first thing to do then, I think, is just to prove that these are composition series, and the only jump 
in both of them that we need to worry about is this one here, from Fm to Gk minus 1 and from Fm to Hl minus 1. All of the others are from other composition series and therefore they're all going to be absolutely fine. Now we have proven already that Fm, which is just another name for F, uh, is indeed a proper normal subgroup of both Gk minus 1 and of Hl minus 1. What we now need to consider is how do we know that Gk minus 1 quotiented out by Fm and also, where shall I write it? I'll write it up here, HL minus 1, and let me just bring this down a bit, okay, HL minus 1 quotiented out by FM, okay, which are these two jumps here, the composition factor corresponding to these two jumps. So here's the composition factor for this one, here's the composition factor for this one. We need to prove that these are simple groups. Okay, now how are we going to do that then? Well, we're going to use the second isomorphism theorem. So let's go back to our picture and um, have a look at what these really are referring to. So HL minus 1 quotiented out by FM. Here is HL minus 1. Here is FM here, which is just obviously another name for F. Okay, so I need to quotient HL minus 1 up into uh, the cosets of F, and then those will become the elements of this quotient group. Now, the second isomorphism theorem tells me, and the picture makes this intuitive, that this will actually be isomorphic to what I would get if I had, and I'll just write out the second isomorphism theorem, the product of HL minus 1 with GK minus 1, and then I quotiented that out by the entire of GK minus 1. Because remember, FM here that's just the intersection of GK minus 1 and HL minus 1. So I hope this is intuitive from the picture. If you're unfamiliar with the second isomorphism theorem, then consider going back to the earlier video in this playlist on group theory on the second isomorphism theorem. Okay, but I hope it's intuitive from the picture. Here, on the left-hand side, I've got HL minus 1, and I'm quotienting it out just by this intersection of HL minus 1 with GK minus 1. Okay, what I could do is take the product of HL minus 1 with GK minus 1, which would create me all of the cosets of GK minus 1 that contain elements of HL minus 1. Okay, so it would create me the larger cosets, if you like. But you can see that all of the cosets that I get here are just the cosets that I get if I was breaking up this product into the cosets of GK minus 1, but intersect HL minus 1. They're just the cut-off cosets, if you like. We're looking now at the vertical cosets here. And you're just effectively cutting them off to get these little squares that are left over here. Okay, so truly there is a beautiful correspondence between the cosets that you'd have here if we partition this product, which of course is equal to the entire group. So if you like, you can replace that with the entire group uh, by the setup theorem that we did here, quotiented out by GK minus 1. So HL minus 1 quotiented out by FM is isomorphic to the entire group quotiented out by GK minus 1. Now, back up here, in composition series number one, we had that as a composition factor. GK quotiented out by GK minus 1 was a composition factor here, so it must be a simple group. Okay, uh, so that proves that this one is simple. And we're going to employ a very similar tactic to proving that this one is simple. So again, go to the picture for intuition as to what this means. We're taking uh, GK minus 1 and we're quotienting it out by FM, uh, the intersection of GK minus 1 with HL minus 1. Okay, so we'll partition GK minus 1 up into these cosets here. Okay, now again, the second isomorphism theorem says that this is isomorphic to what you would get if you took the product of GK minus 1 with HL minus 1 and quotiented thou that out by the entire of HL minus 1. Okay, and again, I hope that's intuitive from the picture because these are just little portions of each of the cosets here uh, of HL minus 1. Uh, in the product, which is the entire group. Okay, so again, just replace this now with, it is in fact the entire group, and now we've just got the group quotiented out by HL minus 1. Well, again, this is a composition factor in composition series number 2 up here. HL was the improper subgroup, uh, and we're quotienting it out by HL minus 1 and getting a simple group because this is a composition series. Evidently, therefore, this must be a simple group.
Okay, so that's the proof that this is absolutely fine. These jumps are fine. Okay, so now we have uh, proven then that these are uh, valid composition series for my group capital G. Okay, so now let's actually prove then what we want to prove, that part two of the Jordan-Holder theorem holds uh, for these two composition series here. And the way, as I say, we're going to do this is via uh, this indirect pathway that I pointed out initially. So we're going to show that composition series number one and composition series number three here, and this is awfully inconvenient that they're so far away, um, Composition series number three down here. In fact, I think what we'll do is we'll go over the page and write them all out again so that I've got them all in one place and then I'll show you um, what I want to show you. Okay, so bear with this for a moment. I'll just write them all out. So composition series number one then. Okay, so this is our initial one. This is the one in terms of G. So we've got G0 is a normal subgroup inside of G1 and then it goes up and onwards all the way up to gk minus 1 here, which is a normal subgroup inside of uh, gk, which is another name for the improper subgroup g. Okay, so there's number 1. Okay, now let's have number 2. So number 2 is the h1, so we've got h0 is the trivial subgroup, it's a normal subgroup inside of h1, etc., all the way up to hl minus 1, my maximal normal subgroup inside of the improper subgroup, which I'm calling hl, which is equal to g, and that's composition series number 2. So those are my two original ones, and I'm trying to prove that part 2 of the Jordan-Holder theorem holds for these two, and the complexity here is that these two maximal normal subgroups are not the same thing. They are different maximal normal subgroups. So what I have now done is I've devised these related composition series to each of them. So here is composition series number three, which both involve this composition series that I came up with for the intersection of these two maximal normal subgroups F. Okay, so I've got F0, which is my name for the trivial subgroup now, which is contained within F1, and this goes all the way up to Fm here, okay, where again M is just some natural number that I'm not totally sure of yet, but we will uh, work this out. Okay, and then inside of this we will have well, rather, outside of this, this will be contained within gk minus 1, which is then uh, normal within gk, which is obviously equal to my improper subgroup. So this is composition series number 3 here. And finally, composition series number 4. Again, it contains this composition series for the intersection of gk minus 1 with hl minus 1 here. So f0, f1, all the way up to fm here. Okay, but this time now I want it to be contained within HL minus 1, which is then normal inside HL, which is equal to the entire group. So this is composition series number 4. Okay, so these are the two new manufactured ones. Okay, so what I'm firstly going to do then is show that part 2 of the Jordan-Holder theorem holds between 1 and 3, and between 2 and 4, and then I'll show that it holds between uh, 3 and 4, and then uh, it will hold between all of them then, okay? Because the statements are transitive, uh, evidently because they're just length statements and correspondence of the composition factors. Okay, right, so let's start with 1 and 3 here. Okay, so I've got these two composition series here, okay, for my group capital G, and look, the, no uh, the maximal normal subgroup in these composition series is the same. Now, that means we're just back to case one, where we had two composition series with the same maximal normal subgroup. We can then instantly conclude that part two of the Jordan-Holder theorem holds true, but I will just repeat the argument here to remind you because it's so important. Okay, so what you do then is you cover up this portion here. Okay, and you now just say, look at the composition series downstream of this. Okay, those are composition series for gk minus 1 now. Okay, so we're looking at composition series 1 and 3 here. Okay, gk minus 1 has order less than the order of the group. So by the inductive assumption, part 2 of the Jordan-Holder theorem must hold true. I, the length of this must equal the length of this, okay? And the composition factors must correspond. So m here, I now have a boundary on what m must be equal to. It must just equal uh, k minus 2, okay? So that the composition for its series for gk minus 1 that I've got here and here have the same length, okay? And in addition, the composition series uh, 
that, that then their composition factors must correspond. Okay, then finally, of course, you can then extend that to saying that these two overall composition series uh, obey part two of the jordan holder theorem because their lengths are both just uh, plus one of what the composition series length for gk minus one was, and of course, uh, this composition factor and this composition factor are exactly the same, so those two can correspond. Okay, so indeed we have now shown that part, uh, sorry, that composition series number one and three corresponds to one another uh, in the way that part two of the jordan holder theorem says. Okay, so the same argument holds true for composition series number two and number four here. Okay, again, I have got two composition series for G where the maximal normal subgroup, the one that is just to the left of the improper subgroup, is the same, so the exact same argument works again. You can conclude, therefore, that M is equal to L minus 2 now, okay? Um, the lengths must equal the same from uh, the HL minus 1 downwards, and their composition factors must correspond. Uh, and then, of course, when you just extend up to include this one extra jump uh, to this uh, to, to the improper subgroup of G, then they will still have the same length and they'll still have corresponding composition factors. Okay, so 2 and 4 obey part 2 of the jordan holder theorem. So now all we need to prove is that 3 and 4 obey uh, part 2 of the jordan holder theorem. Well, this is pretty obvious, okay, because they're very, very similar up to here. They're, in fact, the same up to here. Okay, so their length up to there is certainly the same. And then it's obvious that their length is then going to be the same, because uh, each of them just contains an additional two subgroups with two composition factors overall. Okay, so um, it's obvious that their lengths are the same. Why then is it the case that the composition factors of these two will correspond? Well, of course, for all of this bit, the composition series is identical, so their composition factors will correspond very simply. Now, this bit here, well, this is the bit where we need to go back to what I showed you over leaf. Okay, so here, gk minus 1 quotiented out by fm was the same as G quotiented out by HL minus 1, okay? So in fact, I've got the picture here, so we don't actually need to go back over these. This one here, GK minus 1 quotiented out by FM, this composition factor is the same as the entire group, which is HL here, quotiented out by HL minus 1. So this corresponds to the composition factor you'd get from here. And here, if we now consider HL minus 1 quotiented out by FM, this is the same as G quotient out by GK minus 1, which is GK quotient out by GK minus 1. So these two are in correspondence as well. Okay, so to add that on to the picture over leaf then, the composition factor that you get here corresponds to the composition factor that you get here, and the composition factor that you get here corresponds to the composition factor that you get here in uh, 4. Okay, so indeed, these two do have corresponding composition factors, and therefore these two obey uh, part two of the jordan holder theorem. Okay, so because these statements, i.e. length of the composition series and the correspondence of the composition factors are evidently transitive, if it's the case that it's true between 1 and 3, and it's true between 3 and 4, and it's true between 4 and 2, then it's also going to be true between 1 and 2. How can it not? They are going to have to have the same length composition series. Okay, so I will just state this explicitly. If this one's got the same length as this one, which we know, and this one's got the same length as this one, which we know, and this one's got the same length as this one, which we know, then this one has the same length as this one. Okay, and for the composition factors, if this one's got the same composition factors as this one, okay, and this one's got the same composition factors as this one, and this one's got the same composition factors for this one, then this one has got the same composition factors for this one. Okay, so indeed we have now proven part two of the jordan holder theorem, which is a very powerful statement that if you take a finite group and uh, devise any composition series for it that you like, part one of the jordan holder theorem says that you can always find one, uh, the composition factors that you get, the list of composition factors that you get, uh, is well defined, okay? I.e. if you find another composition series, it will give you the same list of composition factors. And with that, we will end this video.